Shabbat Shalom. Welcome as we celebrate this weekend. As, uh, Solomon Schwartz Radowski becomes Bar Mitzvah. Welcome to those of you here in the Kaufman Shukman Cha- Chapel, and welcome to those of you who are watching from home via the miracles of a live stream. We begin our service uh, in the, on the back of the uh, Shabbat leaflet with a song of welcome, V'imru Amen. Welcome Shabbat with light as we continue on page five of uh, the Kol HaNeshama Sidor at your seats as uh, Solomon leads us in the blessing over our Shabbat lights. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kedishanu B'mitzvotah V'tivanu Lehad lik ne'er shel Shabbat. Asher kiddush anu b'mitzvotav v'tzivanu. Lehad lik ne'er shel Shabbat. Blessed are you, the source of light, our God, sovereign of all worlds, who has made us holy with your mitzvot and commanded us to kindle the Shabbat light. Amen. Amen. And we welcome Shabbat with light as we continue uh, with song as well as we continue on page 13 uh, as we welcome the angels of blessing and peace. Shalom Aleichem. Shalom Aleichem, Malach 
on Shabbat, uh, the Shabbat herself shows up as we sing the psalm for Shabbat, page 49, Psalm 92. We are ready to, uh, to formally welcome the presence of Shabbat as we turn to Lechadodi. We'll sing the verses on page 41 and 43 and rise to face the doors on 47. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
now that we have welcomed the presence of Shabbat into our midst, we extend greetings of Shabbat Shalom to the ones around us. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. it is when friends and family can be together in harmony and how good it is to give thanks to God's eternal name as we continue on page 57 with the Baruch Hu, our call to evening prayer. Please be seated. We continue on page 60 with an interpretive reading of the first blessing of the evening service. Let's read together. Praised are you, God, ruler of the universe, who has ordained the rhythm of life. The day with its light calls to activity and exertion, but when the day wanes, when with the setting of the sun colors fade, we cease from our labors and welcome the tranquility of the night. The subdued light of the moon and stars, the darkness and the stillness about us, invite rest and repose. Trustfully we yield to the quiet of sleep, for we know that while we are unaware of what goes on within and around us, our powers of body and mind are renewed. Therefore, at this evening hour, we seek composure of spirit. We give thanks for the day and its tasks, and for the night and its rest. Praised are you, God who brings on the evening. As we've given thanks for the universal gifts of the changing of times and seasons, we give thanks for the unique gift of Torah, page 63.
rise and turn to page 65 as Solomon leads us in the affirmation of our faith, the Shema. We continue silently on the following pages with the biblical selections, concluding on page 73. you may be seated. We continue on page 79 with our song of freedom that Moses, Miriam, and all Israel sang as they crossed the sea to the land of promise. Adonai et Yaakov Ugelom yad chazak mimenu Baruch ata Adonai Gahal Yisrael Amen Joining us this evening as a familiar face our senior rabbi who's here this evening and uh, uh, is invoking his senior rabbi prerogative uh, I'd like to uh, share some words uh, this evening at this moment in the service. The place feels somewhat familiar. I'd like to thank uh, Rabbi Shevitz and Cantor Cohen for allowing me to be on the Bima tonight. I um, want to begin by extending a mazel tov to Solomon. I've seen Solomon grow up at the synagogue and uh, one of my favorite kids here at Bethel Tzedek. They're all favorite kids. I have a favorite kid coming up for a bar mitzvah in, in a couple of months too. 
I am here um, because, as you know, uh, I'm going to be a civilian in a couple of months. <laughs> so I thought I'd check out a synagogue to attend. What do you think, Solomon? Would you recommend this one? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that case, uh, no question. Well, uh, we are about to transition from the prayer that celebrates freedom, liberation of our ancestors, um, a gift that we cherish as Jews and as human beings, and moves us to a prayer of the Hashkivenu that asks for peace, particularly peace over Jerusalem, the land of Israel. I'm sure that we are all following uh, with great interest uh, the convulsive political developments in the land of Israel, in the state of Israel. Um, I must say that I, I've been somewhat surprised uh, during my sabbatical that I have not seen the issue treated as a public concern by our community. No public gatherings, no statements that I have seen come out. I feel it is an important issue to address. So I have come to join you tonight, uh, prayerfully and uh, hopefully, but nonetheless, I feel the need to speak out. I have um, written a message that appeared today in the Times of Israel, and I will just read it to you. It says, for those of us who love Israel, this is a time of care and of concern. Care for the land and the people that are at the heart of our heritage and our identity. Concern about the political turmoil and veritable crisis of faith surrounding the judicial reform efforts of the current administration. Israel's president, Herzog, has labeled the situation a nightmare and has called for consultations and negotiations to bring about a solution to the destructive proposal that undermines our foundations, in quotes. The Biden administration has also warned about the potential damage that the judicial reform would have in disrupting any of the checks and balances, and balances so essential to democracy. Complicating the judicial and legislative issues are personalities that beyond policy undermine Israel as an egalitarian, free, democratic society for all its citizens. The proven trajectories of Betzalel Smotrich and Itamar ben Gavir threaten the democratic and Jewish soul of the nation. In the meantime, Prime Minister Netanyahu pretends to play to both sides and is more interested in protecting his own legal fate than in the destiny of the state he was appointed to lead. The Haredi or ultra-Orthodox center sector continues to make implacable and growing demands that strain Israeli society culturally, religiously, and economically. Increased terrorism from Palestinian elements and violent settlers strain joint security efforts and dialogue between the Israeli administration and the Palestinian Authority. What is to be done? It is, in part, being done. While the absence of a constitution complicates the Israeli democratic process, the spirit of the Israeli public is decidedly democratic. Hundreds of thousands of Israeli citizens have taken to the streets. Military personnel have gone on strike in ways that do not threaten the security of the nation. Grassroots dialogue between like-minded Jewish and Arab Israelis is flourishing and diaspora Jews have spoken up and demonstrated publicly in unprecedented fashion to promote and protect the integrity of Israel as a secure democratic state undergirded by Jewish values. President Herzog has expressed hope that a consensus solution is within reach to heal the civil unrest and curtail the disastrous oppressive legislation. A critical lesson for, 
from what is happening in Israel is not only the worrisome prospect of the current administration's plans, but a sober recognition that hundreds of thousands of Israelis are pouring into the streets day by day to oppose these regressive machinations. This demonstrates to the world that Israel is not the backward, apartheid, colonialist oppressor that enemies of Zionism paint. This sustained opposition to anti-democratic leadership is a testimony to the vitality of a democratic spirit that has inspired and sustained the best of Israeli society. While we need to decisively decry the efforts of the current Israeli government, the people's response is evidence that those who constantly hate and malign Israel are incorrect in their assessment and malicious in their intent. Countries go through periods of political turmoil and adjust adjustment as has ours historically and in recent memory. Let us hope that the common sense and noble intentions that propelled the Zionist enterprise that gave birth to the State of Israel will prevail and that Israel will emerge strengthened and with renewed vision from the current challenges. The ancient rabbis taught that the Roman Empire's wars against Israel 2,000 years ago were aggravated by sinat hinam, an irrational, groundless hatred among the people of Israel that caused the fall of Jerusalem. It is time for the people of Israel in the state and in the diaspora to exhibit the opposite, ahavat hinam, a spirit of abundant love and respect that will overcome hateful rhetoric and dangerous divisions. As we anticipate the festival of Pesach and the celebration of Israel's 75th anniversary of independence, let us embrace Hatikva, a new day of hope and of peace. The words that conclude the Hashkivenu prayer, which is next in the liturgy, I think summarize our aspirations, our hope. Guard our going forth each day for life and for peace, and spread over us the shelter of shalom. Baruch ata Adonai apores sukat shalom, aleinu ve'al kol amo Yisrael ve'al Yerushalayim. Blessed is the source of compassion who spreads your canopy of peace over all your people Israel and over Jerusalem. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Rabbi. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you for uh, those timely and important words for this moment. And as we ask for divine blessings of protection over those far away, we ask also for blessings of healing for those who are close by. As our thoughts turn to loved ones who are ill, to those who suffer pain of body or brokenness of spirit. We send prayers of healing and think of the following members of our community and loved ones. Larry Baker, Sue Graham Baker, Brian Doner, Amy Maurer Martin, Ron Safran, Ariel Shoshana Bat Esther Zelda, Sandra Siegel, Carol Tandy, Chuck Bader, Bob Diskin, Sarah Bat Miriam, Lynn Mota, Lil Wolfeld, Zippy Bat Gittel, Fran Reed, Dolores Kasif, Naomi Tropp, Philip Rubenstein, Loretta Frank, Jenny Green, Linda Burton, Angela Fry, Jeff Linderman, Elaine Safran, Pearl Regenstreif, Wendy Waldman, Carl Goodfellow, Mann Harris, Elaine Seidman, Dan Linderman, Alan Norris, Jerry Greenberg, David Regenstreif, Liam Smulliam, Luke Reeder, Carol Amendola, Karen Berman, Betsy Pratt, Sanford Schwartz, Marsha Goldfarb. If there are those whose names you would like to add to our communal prayers, please do so as my glance passes yours. Thank you.
We pray for strength and healing that all in need are restored to physical vitality and spiritual well-being. May this healing come quickly, swiftly, and soon. We join together in song on the back of our Shabbat leaflet with the words of our Mishaberach prayer to express our desire for a refuah shlema, a complete healing for those in need. continue on page 85 with uh, the song Vishamru, words that come from this week's Torah portion, actually. We'll uh, read a bit tomorrow morning of, of this uh, prayer, uh, these words from uh, the book of Exodus, um, chapter 31, Vishamru. Israel's descendants keep Shabbat, making Shabbat throughout all their generations as an eternal bond. Between me and Israel's descendants shall it be assigned eternally. For in six days the fashioner of all made skies and earth, and on the seventh day God seized and drew a breath of rest. Please rise and, run, and turn to page 87 for Hatsi Kaddish. Let's go. It got off, it got a shame, Rabba. I mean, be ama, be ama, diver, be ama, divera, curate, be amlich, mahute, be ha, u, yomechon, u, hae, de cobet, Israel. Bada, la, u, vis, man, carib, ve, meru, amen. Yehishmeya <laughs>
We remain standing for the silent Amida. I'd like to welcome to the Bima, Sam, Solomon's brother, to open the doors of the Ark. The Amida can be found on pages 91 through 106. Um, please use the traditional words of prayer and the prayers of your own heart during these moments of silent reflection. Please be seated. We continue on page 115 with Kadi Shalem. Amen. Amen. <laughs> So earlier in the service, we sang the words of Vishamru, words from the book of Exodus, chapter 31, from this week's Torah portion, as I mentioned, which highlights Shabbat as an eternal sign of the Jewish people. It ends with the phrase, Uvayom hashvi'i shavat vayina fash, as, uh, as Solomon read in the English on page 84, and on the seventh day, God ceased and drew a breath of rest. And this final word, vayina fash, is the same as nefesh, which later comes to mean soul. It appears as a verb in, in, in this phrase, and it's hard to translate. It might literally mean something like, and God was ensouled. Our Siddur translates it, and God drew a breath of rest, which is similar to how Rashi, the great biblical commentator, understands the word. And Rashi begins his explanation by saying that the word means that God took a deep breath. But then he immediately adds that it makes no sense to attribute rest or breath to God, the one who created all simply by speaking it into being. 
According to Rashi, it's only used this way to us mere mortals so that we might understand what, me, might, might, what might be experienced here. And the crucial thing to understand is that pausing our labors, ceasing, as the Sidor puts it, is a precondition for refreshment and holiness. In the story of creation, God rests on the seventh day and declares it holy. One of the prayers of Shabbat speaks of Shabbat as Yom Menucha Ukdusha, a day of rest and holiness, with rest coming first. We can't discover holiness until we let ourselves rest. And one of the great innovations of the Torah is the notion that ordinary human beings, including slaves, have a right to rest. In the ancient world, rest belonged to the gods and perhaps their, their son, the earthly king. Humans were created to work for them so that they might have leisure. But the Torah opens with a proclamation that every human being is created in the divine image, which is then immediately followed by a sanctification of a day of rest. And the notion that the, that the right to rest is vital to humanity can only have been created by a nation of recently liberated slaves. So much of our lives is spent on the treadmill of seeking a livelihood, of pursuing needs both real and imagined. And parenthood and maintaining a household can also become a treadmill. There can even be the treadmill of serving others that becomes a burden. And through the words of Vishamru, the Torah gives us a great gift, insisting that Shavat and Vayina Fash go together, that you have to stop in order to truly breathe and be ensouled. The rest and breath of Shabbat is also supposed to give us a glimpse of the world to come when all the improvements needed in the world will be completed. At moments like these, it feels like we are moving further away from that vision, but Shabbat gives us a sense of the work that we must still strive to do. And one of the ways that ensoul ourselves on Shabbat is through songs of hope which inspire us to build the vision that we might want to bring about. And I invite you to turn to your Shabbat leaflet as we sing Olam Chesed Yibaneh, a prayer from the Psalms that the world we work to create is built through love. God sanctified the seventh day, so too do we. Uh, we do so at this moment with wine. I invite you all to rise, and I would like to welcome um, to the Bima, Peter and Sherry, Solomon's parents. As Solomon leads us in the Kiddush on page 119 with an opening, um, with an opening reading. Top 
The commandment to bless this wine is a commandment to drink life as deeply as we drink from this cup. It is a commandment to bless life and to love deeply. It is a commandment to remember with Shabbat heart, to act with Shabbat hands, to see the world with Shabbat eyes. It is a commandment to laugh until we are all laughter, to sing until we are all song, to dance until we are all dance, and to love until we are all love. This, this is, is the wine that, that God has commanded us to bless and drink. Amen. He who yom techila, let me cry a kodesh. Zecher li tiyat mi trayim. Ki vanu vacharta, v'yotanu ki nasha, mi gomim. V'shavat kodshecha, Amen. 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 And we remain standing. We'll say the blessing over uh, the chala. Sam, come on up. Remember this one? Let's try it together. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Hamotzi Lechem In Haaretz Amen. Take it. Take it. You touch it, you take it, so it's yours. Yeah. <laughs> we can leave it up here for right now. We'll, we'll, uh, there you go. You guys can head back to your seats. Solomon will stay up here. We remain standing and continue on page 121 for Alenu. <laughs> כתוב בתורתך אדוני ימלוך לעולם ועד and those observing a yard site, please remain standing. 
In reciting Kaddish, we affirm our awareness of holiness in our lives and rec uh, recognize that much of our experience of God's goodness, grace, and love comes to us through those whose lives have touched our own. On this Shabbat, we remember loved ones who have died in recent days and weeks. Saran Horwitz Klein, Jill Cooper Rose. We keep them in our hearts alongside those for whom we mourn and those whose yard site occurred in the last week as in, in loving testimony to the faith that links the generations. Those who mourn and all who remember during the recitation of the Kaddish, page 131. Amen. Yehe Shame Raba Mivarach Le Alam Ulame Amaya Yit Barach Vit Tabach Vit Paar Vit Ramam Vit Nase Vit Hadar Vit Ale Vit Halal Shame de Kudisha Perihu Le Ela Min Ko Birchata Vashirata Tush Bechata Venechemata De Amiran Miyama Vimru Amen Yehe Shlama Raba Min Shemaya the Chayim Alenu Vial Koli Israel Vimru Amen. O Se Shalom Bim Romav, who ya a Se Shalom Alenu Vial Koli Israel, Vial Koli Shre Tevel Vimru Amen. May the source of peace and comfort send comfort to those who are bereaved, peace to Israel and to the entire world. And to this we say Amen. You may be seated. On the beamer with us uh, this evening is Cindy Harp, representing our board of directors and officers, uh, and I uh, welcome her to the pulpit to share some Shabbat greetings and announcements. Thank you, Rabbi. Is there a specially marked up one of these? Or? Um, I, I think they it, want me to wing it. I thought it was up I there. I thought it was up there. Maybe it's on the... I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Rabbi Dennis, I know you missed this. <laughs> um, Solomon. Mazel tov. It is so nice to interact with you in person. I had Solomon in fifth grade during the year that it was all virtual. And I, I, I bet you missed this too. Anyway, congratulations to you, your parents, um, Sherry and Peter, your brother, Sam, of course, and your grandmother, Sue Radofsky. It is wonderful to share the Bema with you, with Rabbi Hal, Cantor Melissa, Rabbi Charles, um, <laughs> and always Rabbi Dennis and <coughs> Rabbi Sandy as well. I didn't get to share the bima, but here you are, lucky us. When you have. Sandy and I walked in tonight. Somebody says now they're letting out, letting in anybody. <laughs> I hope that wasn't me. <laughs> I thought, my goodness, Solomon, you have some fancy, fancy friends. <laughs> anyway, we have. Quick announcements for upcoming events. Uh, tomorrow morning and all Saturday mornings, we have Torah Talk with Rabbi Hal. Please join the weekly discussion on this week's Torah portion prior to services. We have Beatle Shabbat, backed by what I imagine is popular demand, Friday, March 24th at 6.30. Come together with the spiritual leaders, Congregation Beth El Zedek. Oh, Cancer, you still have wit left after the Purim spiel. I, that, that's cute. I like to that's, attribute that's it. it. Okay, good. I do. Okay. We have Teddy Bear Tot Shabbat, Saturday, March 25th at 10 a.m. Uh, Torah on tap. You're going to the Indiana Pacers game, Monday, March 27th with Rabbi Hal. Seats are limited, so please contact Rabbi Seats Hal. Seats are actually gone now. You can't so. go. I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> we this is why you mark up the announcements. Yes. Okay, well, you would have loved it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> last but definitely not least, I don't know if you heard, but we're having a little party for Rabbi Dennis on, um, well, the whole weekend, actually. It's, <laughs> it's what, how should I put this? Dennis Palooza, maybe? Okay. The Sasso-ish. Uh, so Friday, May 12th through Saturday, May 13th, you're cordially invited for a very special Shabbat services in honor of Rabbi Dennis C. Sasso, celebrating his 47 years at Congregation Bethel Zedek. Uh, we're also honoring Rabbi Dennis with a meaningful and heartfelt tribute journal to which everyone is invited to contribute. And please go to our website. Um, finally, please join us if you are in person after uh, services conclude for our Oneg 
last week it was in the library. I don't know where no, it is that's now. That's only in the mornings. What? I don't think we're having another week today. Okay. No that's one can come. Mornings. It's just not fair. This is why people mark this up for me. Jennifer gave me a <laughs> lot of I trust. I had announcements up here. Deserve. So Not to for, oh, okay. On, on behalf okay. of the board of directors, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. We conclude our service on page uh, 107. Oops. As we... Which, which song are we singing here? Uh, Yehi, it says. Oh, Yehi Ratzon. Yeah, there it is. I, yeah, got it. There I it thought is. I misplaced it. Um, uh, Yehi Ratzon. You can find it in the middle of the page and in transliteration. Um, may that uh, may my words of prayer, and my heart's meditation, be seen favorably, beloved, on my rock and my redeemer. Words that Solomon read earlier this evening. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.